Good day, fellow Oculus users. This is Sean Winterburn here again from Oculus. I'm the sales and marketing manager. And today I'd like to chat to you or do a little bit of education around the settings within the Oculus application. So if you look down at the, the taskbar, you'll see a little icon here, settings. When we click on it, we get uh, redirected into the settings side of Oculus. So this is really where you can start customizing Oculus to be able to do a lot of the, the workloads and a lot of the security that you need within the application. So let's jump into the first one, which is the users. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but what you do is there, as most of our application, you add a new user, you go in there, you can create a name, whatever the person's name is, you can give it a username, email, password, and you can assign it to a department. Now this is something that we'll go into the next, we'll speak a little bit later about, and we can create a user, we can give it a user role. So quick and easy, you can just go in there, create another user, set the access levels, give them user roles, and create um, uh, a user that can be able to interrogate their data. One of the other ways that uh, you can manage what user sees is in the menus. So what Oculus allows users to do is to assign certain menu, menu, um, various menus to that to a role. So if you look on the left hand side, you see all the, the different different functionalities or the, the menus that go through, and then these menus you can assign to a role. So for example, you would like certain users only to see the spaces and only be able to see the dashboards then there will only be a viewer user. If you want a certain user that's maybe a little bit more power user to be able to see the explore, the schedules, the automations, but you don't want them to see the data models or the connections, then you can restrict them from doing that so that you can have a power or, a, or an admin user that can only see the data models and connections just to keep control on the application that you don't get people messing around and changing data uh, on the fly. So it's really good to then be able to create different menus within the organization or for the users so that they can only see certain parts of the application that make sense to them. Okay, so the next area that I wanna uh, discuss or show exactly how it works, it's a little bit more complicated. However, I'm gonna try to keep it in, in three areas that will make sense. So the first one is white label companies and departments. So the great part about Oculus is we can allow an on-premise version for certain customers that want it on-premise. We can allow Oculus for our cloud version where multiple users can get onto it. Or thirdly, we can actually, re uh, uh, our customers can white label our product, have their own URL and be able to resell it as if it's their own product. We have some customers that do that, which is quite, Quite great for them so they don't have to invest in a, a business analytical tool or something like oculus they relabel it, label it their own way so if i start firstly so in the case of when you have your own instance whether in your own cloud or on premises you can then basically have your own url connecting to it and you can then create what you call white labeling so white label then is you create your own name that your 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 product your oculus product will be whether it be ABC Analytics, you can upload your, your own um, logo and then you can put some sort of background that makes it unique to yourself. You have your email support or your email address that goes out when it sends out your, your um, automations and your, your dashboards um, to, on a schedule. And then basically you can create a name, you enable white labeling, send new users and you can save it. So then what happens is when somebody logs on to your application with your URL, whether it be in your cloud or on your premises, it'll look like your own product and uh, there will be no Oculus branding on it. So that's from a, a instance. The second part is if, let's go to then what we call the companies. So the companies is say for example, you have your own head office identity, company A, and in your portfolio, whether you sell Oculus to other customers or your own customers within um, your, your brand portfolio, 
The company side here is where you actually create the brands. So you could be, your head office could be brand A, your companies then working under your head office are brand B, C, D and E and F. You can create these brands and your company will look and have its own uh, logos, it will have its own code and its own description. And you can then create your own um, anything that looks like it, your own CSS and um, around that company. The third part about it is then functional areas within those companies. So the, the part about this is you don't necessarily need to have any company set up, but you can have departments set up. And part, departments in fundamentals are not a department or can be a department, but they also then are functional areas within your organization where you can segregate uh, information to various companies or your main head office company, if that makes sense. So if I give an example, you have company A, that's your head office, and in that company A, you have uh, HR, you have sales, you have various different function areas, you can create this within that functional area and then people will be assigned to that department or that functional area and they'll only be able to see information or dashboards or um, insights, explores, schedules, connections that are associated to that area within that organization. So it's very easy to set it up, you give it a code, you give it a description and you create what company it's actually associated to. So it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the company and uh, it creates a, 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 a nice overview of how to then connect various companies and to create various different roles within your organizations so you can have multiple multi-tenanted um, companies, users, roles connecting to various sources. So it just gives you flexibility to customize it according to your scenario as a customer of Oculus. The next area that I'm going to quickly go over is the themes. So themes is a nice place to be able to create various themes or general themes for organizations. So what a theme is, is, is basically the graphical interface or the look and feel of what you as an organization want to achieve. So many of our customers have got certain skilled or certain colors that they have to have within their, their um, analytical side or what the look and feel looks like. So here is where you actually create the look and feel of what your graphics is going to look like or what your, anal your analytics or your dashboards are going to look like, how the look and feel of Oculus will be, colors and so forth, fonts and and and. So you can add a new color, you can create it a name, add it, create colors and, and really push, push the limits on that. The next area that we want to chat about is then the API key. So in terms of security, an API key is just a key that you create and uh, when you embed applications or dashboards into your application, you can create an API key. And this is just a security string that when the application or when the, the Oculus embed has been put into your application, you can then securely, when somebody clicks on it, it can connect back and make sure that the right person is actually connecting to it and the right information is pulled through. So all the attributes in terms of roles, menus, departments, users are pulled through and then uh, the dashboards can be able to display in terms of what that role is, is being done. A pre-filter is actually quite a, is a really interesting another form of security that we apply to Oculus and this is when whenever you are looking at uh, creating some sort of segregation in data. A good example is that you might have two different regions, a data set with two different regions, and a pre-filter is specifically focused at some sort of data set within the data. So this could be that you have sales that is north, south that is south, that is south orientated, and then you basically create a pre-filter that you can assign to a user so that they can only see that type of information. So let's add a uh, pre-filter on the, the demo data or the sales demo data. So what we've done is we've connected on, we've created a test connection. We can choose a, 
uh, a column that we want to go within the database. So this is really where you can pre-filter according to certain things. So it brings out all the data within the schema, all the data uh, sets that we need to do. And let's use example, we would like per country. So you want uh, somebody to be pre-filtered by company, country, and the value would be, uh, let's say for example, you are based in um, Belgium as a user. We associate the user, we give Nick as one other thing, and we associate the sales dashboard um, with that, that user. The next uh, area within the settings side is the maps. So this is uh, done, uh, there's a lot of use cases for the, the maps that we can actually do, and it's done in the GeoJSON format. So we've got some customers that do maps of countries, maps of regions, maps of towns, maps of um, anything really that's, uh, that you want to do. Some of our production uh, or our factories have a GeoJSON map of their, their factories' floors where they can actually monitor different areas within their factory. So GeoJSON is you can just add a new one, you see it's, it's a map data, you give it a name and you can go to some sites like uh, yeah, create the code for the areas that you want to have and basically uh, then just Im embed that into there, save it, and you'll have the map. So here's an example of the USA map. You can click onto it, and basically what it does is it goes in, it has its own GeoJSON map, and, uh, and you can have a map preview of it. Um, so, so really great stuff to be able to do um, some, some uh, GeoJSON maps of any sort of area that you want to within your, in your organization or the use it. So that's really in a broad uh, view of what the setting side of Oculus can uh, do for you. Um, I'm glad that uh, I could give this video out there. If there's any questions or any um, uh, opportunities that you can see that you'd like to use, contact us at hello at Oculus and we'd really love to meet you and chat about how we can solve your problems.